everybody loves a good scary movie. Okay, so maybe not everybody, but they are certainly more popular than ever. But did you know that many of your favorite scary movies are based on real life people and their crimes? Here's a list of six excellent horror flicks in their grisly true life inspiration. Find out who continued to perform surgeries after they were released from prison. Number 6. Freddy Krueger – Nightmare on Elm Street Nightmare on Elm Street is a classic horror movie and Freddy Krueger the classically terrifying bad guy. For those of you who don't know, the premise of Elm Street is that four teenagers are stalked and killed in their nightmares by the terrifying Freddy Krueger, a dream demon. The idea of the dream demon goes far back in the history of many cultures and, in fact, the later half of the word nightmare mare, is from the Norse term for a demon that causes sleepers to have bad dreams by sitting on their chests. It is said that Wes Craven got the idea for his hit film from a news article he read about a young refugee man living in America. The young man began to have very disturbing nightmares in which a thing was chasing him and trying to kill him. He was so terrified that he tried to stay awake for days at a time, causing his parents to become extremely worried about him. Eventually, when he finally did fall asleep, his parents thought perhaps the turmoil was over. But that night, they heard him screaming in his sleep, having another nightmare, and by the time they got to his bedside, he was dead. This was not a solitary case. Within a four-year period in the late 1970s, there were 18 other cases of refugees, ironically all of the same origins, who died mysteriously in their sleep. Autopsies were carried out on every death, but no cause of death was found. Although not heavily publicized, the main thought behind these deaths was something called Oriental Nightmare Death Syndrome. This is when death is caused by absolute terror from a nightmare. Hmm, I'm really reconsidering going to sleep now. Number 5. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, originally a 1974 film, is about a group of friends who stumble upon a family of cannibals while traveling together to an old family home. While exploring the area, the friends find a seemingly empty house, and one of them enters the house through an unlocked door and meets his death at the hands of the antagonist, Leatherface. The house is soon discovered to be full of furniture made from human bones and pieces of hacked up human bodies. Writers Toby Hooper and Kim Henkel both discussed their inspiration for the film and the real life crime case of Ed Gein came up. Ed Gein, the infamous murderer and body snatcher was arrested on November 16, 1957 after killing Bernice Warden, a shop owner in Plainfield where Gein lived. Upon searching Gein's property, the local police found some horrifying evidence of his snatching bodies from local graves and mutilating them in order to decorate his own home. They found human skin covering several chairs, skulls on his bedposts, bowls made from skulls, say that ten times fast, clothes made from human skin, a lampshade made from a human face, and much, much more. He later claimed that he was trying to make a human suit resembling his late mother so that he could become her and walk around as her. He was found guilty of his crimes but declared legally insane and lived the rest of his life in a psychiatric institution where he died from cancer at the age of 77. Number 4. The Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal The well-known character from this book and movie franchise is, of course, Hannibal Lecter, a serial killer and a cannibal who, despite his crimes, was an intelligent, well-spoken, and highly educated man. In The Silence of the Lambs, Lecter helps FBI agent Clarice Starling catch the serial killer Buffalo Bill from the confines of his prison cell. In return for his help, he gets moved to a new prison but escapes while being transferred. Lecter kills his guards and then uses one of their faces to fool the paramedics. Thomas Harris did not reveal his inspiration for the character of Hannibal Lecter for some time after the books and movies had been released. but. In 2013, he spoke up saying that while visiting a Mexican prison in the 1960s, an inmate named Alfredo Bali Trevino, known also as Dr. Salazar, was a doctor found guilty of killing and mutilating his former friend and lover in the 1950s. He served 20 years in prison and then resumed his medical practice after continuing to be a surgeon, often doing pro bono work for those who otherwise could not afford surgery. Remind me not to use him for my next surgery.
Number 3. The Exorcist The 1973 supernatural movie The Exorcist, adapted from a novel of the same name that was published just a few years before, tells a story of a 12-year-old girl who has been possessed by a demonic Pazuzu spirit and describes the many vulgar and evil things she does while being possessed. It tells of how her mother tries desperately to help her by getting two priests to perform an exorcism. This story was based on the real-life example of a young 14-year-old boy who went by the pseudonym Roland Doe. Roland was introduced to spiritual paraphernalia by his Aunt Harriet, who showed him how to work a Ouija board. Then, shortly after his aunt's death, the family started to notice odd things happening all around Roland, including household objects moving on their own. The boy underwent a number of exorcisms, during which he allegedly broke from his restraints and stabbed the priest with a bed spring which he tore from his own bed. For obvious reasons, this stopped the exorcism and the ritual had to be postponed. The next, and supposedly successful attempt at the exorcism, was performed by Walter Halloran, William Van Roo, and William Bowden. It is said that during the ritual words such as evil and hell appeared all over the boy's body and the mattress shook with great force. A reporter was later told after the event that Roland went on to live an ordinary life. It was greatly discussed in the following years whether it was really a demonic possession though, or whether the boy was just deeply disturbed both mentally and emotionally. Number 2. Amityville Horror The movie The Amityville Horror was based on a book of the same name. It is about a young family who buy their first home only to find out after the fact that it is possessed by evil spirits. After trying to bless their home, the local priest that is trying to fight against these evil spirits is driven mad by the demons and has a breakdown. The unexplainable events continue and they grow more and more dangerous until, one night, the family leave the home and never return. This movie is based closely on the experiences of the real-life Lutz family, who moved into their new home in Amityville, Long Island in December of 1975. On their first inspection of the house, it was told to them that just 13 months prior, Ronald DeFeo Jr., the former resident of the house, murdered six of his family members in the property. They said at the time that this would not be a problem. As Kathy Lutz was a practicing Catholic, she asked Father Pecoraro, a lawyer, judge of Catholic court, and a psychotherapist, to perform a blessing ritual over the house. While doing so, he heard a deep, masculine voice telling him to leave the house immediately. And he did. He quickly left the property. However, after trying to warn George Lutz of what had happened, he developed a high fever and blisters all over his hands. It was from that point on that strange events really began to frequent the house. George Lutz began to wake every night at 3.15 a.m the exact time the murders were thought to have happened. Kathy Lutz had vivid nightmares that told her details of the murders that she otherwise could not have known. Missy Lutz, their five-year-old daughter, developed an imaginary friend in the shape of a demonic pig. One night while George was awake at 3.15 a.m., checking the boathouse was secure, he looked up and saw in Missy's window the pig holding Missy. When he got to her room though, she was fast asleep, but her rocking chair was slowly rocking back and forth. Eventually, just as the movie tells it, they could not stand the paranormal happenings anymore and they left their home and all of their possessions behind. Number 1. The Girl Next Door In this highly disturbing movie, we enter the memories of a man named David as he recalls a summer in 1958 when two girls move into the house next door to him. He immediately becomes interested in them, developing kind of a crush on the older sister Meg. The house they move into belongs to the well-known Aunt Ruth, a woman with three sons who lets the neighborhood children drink alcohol and smoke in her house. Sounds like a winner. Aunt Ruth does not take well to her nieces though and begins to mistreat them, starving Meg, beating her younger sister Susan, and verbally abusing the girls. The abuse gets so bad that Meg tries to tell a police officer, which unfortunately just escalates matters, resulting in Meg being tied up, raped, and eventually killed by Aunt Ruth and her sons. The movie is based on the true story of Sylvia Likens, who was left with her younger sister Jenny in the care of Gertrude Banaszewski while their parents traveled with a carnival. I think I already see the problem here. Anyway, Gertrude and her children begin to beat and torture Sylvia Likens, pushing her down the stairs and force feeding her until she vomits, then making her eat her own vomit. When Sylvia Likens was accused of bad-mouthing the Banaszewski children in school, her torture just got worse and the other children in the neighborhood even began to join in. They burnt Sylvia, tied her up, 
scalded her, forced her to eat her own feces, and sexually abused her. While locked in the basement, Sylvia tried to shout for help and bang on the walls, but no one came. The authorities were eventually tipped off, but when a health nurse made a home visit, Benazuski blocked the door to the basement and told her she had kicked the Lycans girl out a long time ago. Eventually, as a result of the beatings, malnutrition, and dehydration, Sylvia Likens died from a combination of shock and a brain hemorrhage. The police were called and told a lie about how a local gang of boys had been the ones to abuse Sylvia, but her little sister Jenny was able to escape with the police and tell them everything. They later arrested Gertrude Banaszewski, her children, and several of the neighborhood kids for murder and grievous bodily harm. So there you have it. The next time you watch one of these scary movies, maybe you'll be a little more frightened just knowing that there are real people out there this crazy and deranged. Leave us a comment below telling us about your favorite horror movie. Don't forget to subscribe and be safe out there.